that leads me on to a question with you. What frustrates you in freestyle ski? No, not freestyle, but skiing. You could teach what? terms a bit more than I do. Uh, but, okay, so do you mean what frustrates me? Like when I go skiing, what in my own skiing frustrates me or the ski? No, with others. With, our, uh, with others. Because I just said how I get frustrated when people hurt themselves because of loss of, uh, yeah, not so much yeah. guidance. With normal ski technique, I bet something frustrates you too that you kind of just want to fix the world. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have the same thing. I, I think, I think I like. I would just say I'm on a quest to try and find the best explanations with skiing, uh, teaching skiing, because okay, maybe what frustrates me as or has frustrated me is is ambiguous or not clear instructions when you're being taught from others on how to do it like um that's that's probably where it's come from like i even remember i've probably said this before on another podcast but i remember when i got my level three csia canadian instructor uh, certificate and i was really drunk celebrating in the in the bar at silver star and i uh and i actually didn't know this but i yelled out that you know when i become a, an examiner or whatever i'm going to ban the word rotation mm -hmm. because like it seemed like a bad word and and it just didn't make sense to me i can remember early on saying like I don't see when you're when you're saying that you only turn with the legs and you only turn with the lower body. Like I'm watching a video and like it looks, it doesn't look just like that. It doesn't look like this uh, mannequin doll from a clothing shop that you just twist the legs. Do you know what I mean? It looks mm -hmm. it looks like more integrated and the upper body is is doing some things. So I think I've been frustrated with just the way things have been described. Like that's that's it, and and I just actually finished recording interview an interview with this guy Benji Alexander, who's uh, going is uh, an Olympic hopeful for Jamaica, and he's only learned to ski five years ago, so skiing is very fresh. Cool. And he's, yeah, it's super cool, and and you know what? It's like we had this conversation about you know like there's these things like getting forward and stand on your outside ski, and you can hear it over and over again and you know like you know everyone says it but what does it really mean and you know he, he's like you know there's just this one time it'll click because people rearrange the words maybe in a different order or they just added one more word to it and then bam th there it goes and and so i think in the ski instructing world it's very easy to just copy the person that coached you and say exactly the same things that they said to you and maybe one of those things worked. So you think that same phrase is going to work for everyone else you teach. Uh, and yeah. unfortunately it doesn't, so. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I have a similar thing uh, with freestyle skiing where I've, like, I've tried so many different ways to teach people how to pop. It's my main frustration when I'm teaching someone how to take off from a jump. You know, everybody knows how to do it in their shoes. Everybody or barefoot. Um, yeah. And it's really not different at all on skis. It just got, you got this uh, limited range of motion in the ski boots that kind of throws people off. And um, I notice it so often. You change one word and all of a sudden it clicks. Or more frustratingly, like um, rotate two groups of, of uh, skiers, and um, I give the ski to my co-coach Josh, for example, and he says it differently, and boom, they know how to do it. And I'm like, damn it, why did I? What, what exactly did you say, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and what do you think? Because if that's your, that's been obviously something you've really thought about a lot. What do you think has really helped like have you gotten a lot better in describing it or or is it not just that is it reading 
that person, like what are the steps now you go through that you're like, I am, this person is going to learn to pop so well or we're not leaving the mountain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one of the, well, I just know what I do these days and that is um, start with the standing still, unbuckle everyone's ski boots completely so it feels as much as possible like um, doing it in the barefoot or in the shoes. Sometimes even start like the first night of a camp that everyone like jumps on the spot, jump a little bit forwards because I think if you have a little bit uh, forward momentum, it's more like doing it off a jump and then work our way up from there like straight away and try to make the people never ever do a jump before doing um, some uh, drills first, starting with the open ski boots or somewhat open in the first tiny jumps too. Because when it comes to the pop, everyone has so much, has usually learned to jump while they still had fear and no knowledge about how to do it. So they absorb the jump kind of like a ski racer going over a roller um, out of fear and yeah, just wanting to make the jump as small as possible while having lots of speed. Um, and that is the op opposite of what you want to do. In freestyle skiing, you want to go as high as possible, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think like in that, I think like that's an element that I think is a, like, is actually a, like a coaching principle, like, because if something like you get people to show like an edging movement, for example, like someone's lacking early edging in, in their short term and indoors you show them how to do it that there's this usually a step like missing between, okay, they can do it there, they get it, and then like you found this frustration. Everyone can jump without ski boots. You put ski boots on and put on a jump and then suddenly it's all go. They do these opposite movements. And so I think it's really interesting breaking it down and trying to get the smallest steps, as you said, from, okay, now boot, boots are undone, so it's more like there's no ski boot. And making these steps, like I think that is – is something I've learned, uh, especially coaching online, because I can't be there with the person. I have to do a lot of indoor stuff and then also give them uh, instructions on when you get out, out on snow, don't go straight to trying it. Like here, here's the next little step because it's just the way the brain works. We work by what we already know and compare to that. So when you're trying something, you have to have something comparable to kind of be in the ballpark of like what you're doing. Oh, it's like 80% like this, but here's the little bit of a difference. But if it's a hundred percent different, then yeah, it's just, you've almost got no chance. <laughs>